Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. Hey, today I wanna to talk to you about one of my favorite actual supplements. It's something I've used for pretty much every patient, and it's something that all of us as humans need, and it's called a vitamin, but this isn't actually a vitamin, this is actually a hormone, um, and it's vitamin D, or vitamin D3. And most people at this point know that vitamin D3 is something that we need to take. You know it's something we get from the sun. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a very important part of most processes in our body, from everything to the immune response, to helping calm the immune system, balancing the immune system. It's very important for a lot of the processes and hormone production and everything else. And um, it's something that we need to be getting from the sun, Unfortunately, we're not, so we're going through a supplement process. But I found this article, and this is actually from 2017, I, and I almost feel like I read it before, but it's something that um, I was actually researching on uh, psoriasis and soy, because I wanted to kind of walk you guys through why I recommend not eating soy. So stay tuned for that video, I'll get there. But I came across this article, and it talks about high-dose vitamin D dramatically improves psoriasis and vitiligo. Okay, vitiligo is a, a, when you lose little patches in your hair, or um, skin issues, I'm sorry, and when you have skin issues, and um, uh, little patches of different color uh, skin pigmentation changes, and uh, it's, it's an autoimmune disease, okay? And psoriasis ultimately is as well. It's where your immune system is, is causing an overactive T-cell response. You produce extra skin uh, layers, and it becomes placky, and, and, and it can get into the joints and cause issues in the joints and everything else as well. And so psoriasis, uh, I'm sorry, so vitamin D plays a huge role in this cell-mediated response. Now, I talk a lot about reducing stress on your body so that your immune system isn't becoming overactive, like removing food allergies. I talk a lot about um, eating, removing foods that are causing hyperactivity in the immune system, like gluten and like high amounts of sugar and dairy and things like that. But there's, this is actually the vitamins that you can be taking are very important as well. So with vitamin D, first thing is getting out in the sun. And, and getting out in the sun without your 30 proof uh, sunscreen, right, without tons of clothing on, always having to be in the shade, get out in the sun and enjoy the sun. They've shown significant differences between people with autoimmune diseases in the north versus the south, right? People that are um, farther north have lower vitamin D3 levels are in the sun less, and they also have higher instances of autoimmune issues and many gut issues. And so vitamin D can be something that you should or should be something you're getting from the sun. And so every morning I like to get out, I like to look up at the sun, I try to get outside as much as possible, show your skin, let your body absorb the skin, uh, sun. And I know that a lot of women use um, beauty products for their face that have lotions in there that have actually sunscreen in it. So be careful of that. You don't want to always be putting sunscreen on. You want sun to get to you. It's very important. And the studies they've shown on this, and this is, I think, just one of them right here where they did uh, a, study, a, a study with 38,000 Swedish women for 15 years um, where sun exposure was found to have significant reduction in all-cause mortality rate. So them being in the sun almost all the time had a significant reduction in all-cause mortality rate. And that's from artery disease, strokes, heart attacks, all those things. Also, intermittent sun exposure was correlated with a 60% increase of melanoma. So just being in it every so often and letting yourself burn actually can cause lead to skin cancer. However, being in it often and letting yourself get a tan and, and your melanin and your skin moving properly, not wearing sunglasses so that your body actually produces melanin. Cool tip, they found that when you wear sunglasses, your body doesn't produce the melanin and you get sunburned easier. But letting your skin there, and it says, um, and all the burning should always be avoided it showed that people that are in chronic sun exposure were protective against this most fatal cancer. So actually being in the sun more rather than intermittent is more important, is better than, um, than they've told us in the past, okay? And what I found with medicine is you, if you pretty much do the opposite of what they tell you, you're typically better off, right? I did a, go watch my video on sunscreen and how toxic it is, how the FDA won't take these chemicals out, although other countries do, and how the, the EPA has shown them to be carcinogenic and they're still in there. So if you're someone that's still using sunscreen, please, please, please stop using sunscreen. If you wanna block the sun because you're gonna be out there for many hours at a time, use zinc, put long sleeve shirts on after a while, so you know, obviously don't burn. Um, but other studies have found, it says studies have found that autoimmune disorders occur more frequently in the north than in the south. Okay, that's pretty cool. Vitamin D is this regulatory hormone um, for the immune system. It helps kind of bring the immune system into homeostasis or into balance. It helps calm it when it's too active. It helps protect it. It's also a part of our innate immune response. Our innate immune response is where, you know, coughing, uh, white blood cell production, things like that, sinus congestion, all those things is part of that innate immune response. Um, so it says here, 
that as previously noted, vitamin D levels have been demonstrated to be compromised in autoimmune disease and circulating levels of vitamin D3 are inversely related to autoimmune, autoimmune disease activity, okay? And I've said that over and over again that most people with autoimmune disease have vitamin D deficiencies as well. However, we don't always connect the dots there. Vitamin D actually, it says here that it, it promotes the expression of tolerogenic FOXP3 positive regulatory T cells. Ultimately, it's regulatory T cells where it regulate your Th1, Th2 immune response. With an autoimmune disease, that Th immune response is overactive, okay? And when it becomes overactive, that's where we see the body attacking its own cells. High doses of vitamin D3 have shown to calm that immune response and keep the body from attacking what should should not be harmful cells, which should not be that autoimmune response happening. And so it says vitamin D inhibits activation and differentiation of pathogenic T cells, which are intimate, intimately involved in the etiology of autoimmunity. Ultimately, it helps block the T cell response that's happening that happens in that, that autoimmune response. Pretty cool. It says with psoriasis, however, although speculated to have an autoimmune origin, other research proposed that psoriasis represents an abnormal response to bacterial and the microbiota of the skin. Okay, so they've actually shown that uh, psoriasis isn't fully, for many people seeing it, not fully an autoimmune response every time as well. It could also just be bacterial issues in the skin. Approximately one of five individuals with psoriasis report substantial dissatisfaction with treatment. That's the part I want to talk about. One out of every five people that gets psoriasis treatment, like I did, like many of you have, going to the medical doctor, going to the dermatologist who's supposed to be the expert in skin and getting a steroid. They're an expert in steroids is what they truly are, but they're an expert in suppressing the immune response. They should call them, um, what, we, what are we gonna call them? Uh, immune suppressant doctors? Maybe that's a better term, because that's all they're really doing is suppressing the immune response, right? But it says approximately one out of five individuals who have psoriasis is unhappy with their care. And that's why so many people are watching YouTube videos because you're unhappy with your care, you want those changes. And so I, what I've done is ultimately taken the information that I've learned, the things I've done for myself, the things I've done with patients over the last 10 years, and I've put these things together into small into videos. But that's hard to get over pe long periods of time. So we finally put all this together in a course for you guys, um, and we've launched the pre-sale for this course. So if you're if you're interested, you can go into the description below. Depending on when you watch this video, will depend on obviously what the pricing is for that course. But hit the descriptions below, um, and if you're interested in the online course for psoriasis, it's a game changer. I'm telling you, it will make transform your life in terms of psoriasis. It's everything I do with a patient in the beginning of psoriasis the first three months, and most people get rid of it just from doing that. And it's from learning and constantly researching, constantly learning, and the stuff I've actually used with patients. Cool, the eating plans, the supplements, the things like that, okay? So to continue on here, so they actually, this is a while back, but they did a pilot study, which was pretty cool, and I, I just found this study, but it's 35,000 IUs of vitamin D3 was administered daily to 16 vitamin D deficient patients with vitiligo and nine patients with psoriasis for six months. So vitamin D3, 35,000 IUs for six months. I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, that's gonna cause arterial damage, uh, you know, calcium build in the arteries. To counteract that, they put them on a low, di uh, low calcium restricted diet. Now to be clear, I'm not telling you to go take 35,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Um, that's something I would wanna work individually with you on or, you know, track with you on. However, I would say 10 to 15, maybe even 20,000 I use in regularly checking your vitamin D3 levels is a really good idea if you have psoriasis. And so they said this represents an enormous amount of, um, compared to the normal, 1,000 I use most doctors would recommend. Okay, Dosing of vitamin D3 of autoimmune cohorts often fails to take into account the genetic polymorphism. So we've always wondered, okay, so why do we have um, all these people with vitamin D3 deficiencies? And why do we have all these people that eat unhealthy and aren't inflamed and have gut issues, but not everybody has psoriasis? Well, there is a genetic aspect of it that makes you more susceptible to shifting into that autoimmune response um, and causing psoriasis, okay? And so um, they, they went through that process of that, but however, supra-physiological pharmacologic doses of vitamin D3, so a lot of vitamin D3, may be helpful to circumvent this genetic tendency and promote immunomodulation, which means it ultimately balances out your immune system and uh, come past this autoimmune response. Now, this isn't a cure for all their problems in their life. However, it's a great thing to maybe move towards in the right way to make sure that your body's getting enough vitamin D3 because low D3 levels are shown to be uh, are, are, are common with almost all cancers and many other health issues, heart disease and other things as well. And so, 
at the end of this whole thing, they went through and they showed that 100% of the people with psoriasis saw significant improvement. It says, as evidenced by dramatic photos include in this publicly available study, there was significant improvement in lesion severity in all psoriasis patients as indicated by psoriasis area severity index score. Pretty sweet stuff. So there's clearly a connection between vitamin D3 and psoriasis. So if you have psoriasis and you're not taking vitamin D3 and at a level at least 10 to 15,000 IUs, um, I highly recommend doing that. And if, even more importantly, if, you're, if you have psoriasis and you haven't had your vitamin D3 levels checked, that's a definitely something you need to do. If you want help with that, go to the descriptions. We have, uh, we have testing for that. It's very inexpensive. It's something you can get from us um, and we'll get that for you at the lab fee, okay? Um, finally, researchers conclude that high-dose vitamin D3 therapy may be effective and safe for vitiligo and psoriasis patients. Okay, and maybe not a long-term answer, but it may be something that you want to look into and make that change. Again, don't just go take 35,000 IUs and follow your normal diet. We want a low-calcium diet. We want a good, healthy diet as well along with this process. Okay, so guys, I hope that was helpful for you. I thought it was pretty cool. And um, vitamin D3 is an absolute part of every single patient that comes into our office's care at different levels based on their um, testing. But um, it's something that every one of you should be on. If you have psoriasis, um, it's a no-brainer. It's something that we wash with. Now, there's types of vitamin D3, so go back, watch my D3 videos on what types you should be getting. If you want a good quality vitamin D3, we'll have that in the description below as well and uh, make sure that you get what you need in that area. All right, hey guys, if you want the online course, if you've been looking for answers for psoriasis, you're tired of just having to search all over the webs for it, I put everything together that I do with psoriasis patients uh, in one course platform. It's pretty cool, and, and depending on when you're watching this video, we're doing a pre-sale now, we just launched this, and so the price is lower now than it's ever going to be again. Okay, and you're gonna get a ton from it. You're gonna learn how to become your own health expert and, more and at the same time, you're gonna get rid of psoriasis and I'm excited to see you do that. It's gonna truly transform your life. Go to the description below, you'll find that. And thanks for watching. Hey, subscribe, make sure you continue to share these videos and I'm excited to uh, uh, connect with you next time.